What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video. In this one, we're going to look at the top five overall ranked teams, how their teams are set up, what chips and stuff they've used already, essentially how they got to that position and is there anything we can learn or anything we need to worry about because it can feel quite daunting if you're already quite far behind those that are right at the top. So if you enjoy this video, make sure to give it a like, hit that subscribe button if you are new around here as well. Um, and we're going to start off by taking a look at what points total you need for particular ranks. So this information, is from livefpl.net the one in green is my rank right now so i'm 440 points and i'm ranked about 641,000. so i'm already 122 points behind number one but it's still possible right with a bit of luck or, or maybe even a lot of luck and very soon i could still win this thing this year but this is why i keep talking about not panicking too much about how many points you've got right now i know it doesn't feel nice if you're really far behind but for example right 641k if i finished there at the end of the season i wouldn't be happy with that at all but if i had an extra 40 48 points and don't get me wrong right ifs and buts and maybes and all that stuff but 48 points is not that much to claw back over a whole season i'd be in the top 10,000. now obviously later on in the season when the the points gaps get bigger so you know 48 points might be the difference between 200k and 150k then it's much harder to get up those uh, up the ranks to those higher positions but right now i'm not really panicked at all right if i had another 25 points, I'd be in the top 100k. And that's really the difference from a couple of different captain choices, right? Going for Haaland a couple of times instead of Salah or vice versa later on in the season. You know, using my free hit chip in the right place, getting a bit of luck in the doubles. These points can be clawed back easily. So I wouldn't panic too much, but it is already 122 points for me. So hopefully a little bit of luck between now and game week 16 and maybe I'll be in with a chance of winning this. If not, there's always next season. That's what you've got to think about. In terms of the top five teams themselves these are the current players that they own now interestingly when i was talking about my wild card draft yesterday someone said to me that trippier was essential and i basically replied nobody is essential apart from harlan and that kind of ties in with what these top five teams have got so five out of five of them have harlan everyone else is a little bit split one person's got son one person's got de bruyne or, or at least sorry de bruyne and son featuring at least one of the teams because obviously they could be in the same person's team cancelo another one who people are telling me you absolutely cannot leave out of your team right now he's only owned both or he's only in three of the five teams same for Trippier uh, same for Jesus and Harry Kane as well so they are the most popular players that are featuring in those top five teams and of course they're at the top because they've had a lot of the players that have performed well obviously Kane has been like non-stop getting points throughout the season even though Haaland has obviously been beating him he's been really good as well Trippier is pretty much chipped in with either clean sheets or attacking returns most weeks and we know how good Good. Cancelo and Jesus have been as well and then lastly before we look at the teams themselves this is the chip use right and this is where it gets interesting all five of these teams so the top five teams in FPL right now have used their triple captain okay so they've used it in a single game week we'll have a look at where they used it and whether they got good points from it um, and it, look you can definitely use this chip in a single game week I always say this right if you want to use it you should against teams like Bournemouth at home Forest at home Fulham at home maybe even Leicester at home right now you can use it but there is more chance of getting a bigger score in a double game week later on. And we will have plenty of them and plenty of choice of where to use that chip. People last year used it on Salah. I think he got 26 points or something like that. So obviously you triple that. That's a huge score. I doubt many people have beaten 26 so far in the single game weeks. But again, they've already used that chip. So later on in the season, they won't have those additional points that we do. So that will already be one uh, chance to kind of catch up. Wildcard has only been used by one person. The other four have all used their free hit already. Now, that looks good right now because if you, when we take a look at where they used it and how many points they got, they did hit big with it. So they've played it really nicely. But again, that is going to be a good opportunity later on in the season for other people to catch up. I'm sure I'm probably not going to catch these teams, right? But the ones that are like top 100, top 500 or whatever it might be, top 1,000, they've got absolutely a great chance if they haven't used these chips to catch up. So they've got ahead right now. And sometimes it's easier to play when you're ahead. You can play a bit safer. You don't need to take those risks but there is going to be opportunity later on to catch up and ultimately the only thing that matters is that ranking game week 38 yes it's amazing to be in that number one position at any point in the season but if you can't back it up and stay there at the end and you fall behind it doesn't matter quite so much so you definitely enjoy it while you're up there but obviously you've got to stay ahead now that's the tricky part
So this is currently the number one overall ranked team in FPL, and you're going to love it, right? Because you've got idiots like me sat here saying, do you know what? I've got two premiums. I'm happy with that. Three premiums is probably viable, but I won't go for it. This person, who cares? They've got four premium attackers, De Bruyne, Kane, Haaland, and Son. So we should give them a shout-out. So it's Christian... I want to say that's Finland, but that looks like an L, not an I. So instead of butchering the second name, I'm just going to say Christian. Shout out to you. And of course, they've got a Norway flag. Whatever reason, people from Norway are just great at FPL. Um, so fair play. 87 points. And they played the wild card this week. So this was the one team that played that instead of playing the free hit, which I think is was the better decision. Now, you'll see the points total of those that played the free hit. They really did smash it this week. But I think later on, Christian will be in a better position than they are and obviously ranked at number one. Now, the team they've chosen... In fact, before we look at the team, let's look at the game week history. So they were 1 millionth after game week one, with a game week rank, obviously, of 1 million. And after that, they've absolutely smashed it. So they've gone straight to 54k, then 6,800, then in the top 1, uh, 1k, then 6th, 6th, and 1st. So had an absolutely... Um, you know, brilliant start to the season. And this is what I'm saying about game week ranks, where you don't need to have, like, top 1,000 and stuff like that. You see this game week rank, 500k. This one, 400k. These are good titles. Obviously, if you get a massive one, like 11,000, then that really helps. But that's not what you need. You just need to be consistently in and around kind of the top 1 million for game week rank to have a pretty good season. So they use their triple captain in game week 5. So if we have a quick look at that, of course, 102 points. Absolutely ridiculous. On Haaland. So that was one of his hat tricks against, yeah, the Nottingham Forest hat trick. Fair play. I, I said that I always say this on deadline stream. People always ask me about captains like this, and I never do it, and I never probably will. But if you're gonna do it, they are the fixture to do it. Someone like Harlan, maybe someone like Salah if he comes back into form against Nottingham Forest, against Bournemouth, against Fulham at home, they are good fixtures. And obviously, still smash it. Had Zaha in Martinelli, still had Salah. So still had Salah in the team, just went for Haaland captain, fair play. Uh, Cancelo, Trent and Perisic, so pretty good team there. If we look at the current team though, this is the one that's going to now take them forward because they've used the wild card. Look, I, there are obviously issues with having four premium players. Now when they get kind of 10 points for De Bruyne and Kane and then 19 from Son and even Haaland chipping in with a goal, then obviously it looks great. But they're not going to do that every single week. So then you need the rest of the team to pick up the slack. And I wouldn't want to be playing players like Andreas Pereira every single week, even if it enables me to get four premiums. Obviously, Saliba is about to come into some pretty tricky fixtures as well. Spurs at home, Liverpool at home and a blank in game week 12. So that's something to think about and deal with. Now, I know Arsenal have been great. Their defensive numbers are brilliant. Their attacking numbers are brilliant if they can keep this up throughout the season they could challenge for the title and i'm not one of those people that says oh, all arsenal fans are saying that because they're not right most of them are like yeah we're doing well we're happy let's see how it goes but they have got extremely good defensive and attacking numbers if they can keep that up in the tougher fixtures they will do really well but that is still remains to be seen because they played you would argue only one game where they weren't the favourites. That's Man United and they lost. And of course, if that Martinelli goal counts, then maybe they go on to win. Um, but that is the game they've lost. So Spurs and Liverpool at home are much bigger challenges. And I'm not sure I would want an Arsenal defender. I don't think it's one to panic about. But when you've also got to play Nico Williams every week, and for some reason Tanganga's on the bench who doesn't even play, I guess because he's 3.9. So again, it's to enable that, that four premium. I'm just not sure that it's worth it. And also... Having Tanganga as the 3.9 also blocks off a third Spurs player, which isn't ideal. I guess for most people, you're probably not going to go and get Perisic now because of minutes issues and stuff like that. But you have kind of blocked um, the option of doing that. So the bench is obviously as cheap as it gets to enable those four premiums. It looks good right now, but I think down the line, that is going to be an issue. And you're going to have to start spending transfers to spread that money around. So if I was going to downgrade one of Kane, De Bruyne and Haaland, it probably would be Son, which sounds crazy after a hat trick. Actually, do you know what? It would probably be De Bruyne because of the blank. I would maybe keep them up until game week 10. So give Salah the Arsenal away game. and uh, Sorry, give Son the Arsenal away game and the Brighton away game. And then give De Bruyne up till Southampton. And then look to get rid of him here. And I don't think you can really stretch the funds anymore to go to Salah. So it has to be a downgrade for De Bruyne to then look to swap maybe Saliba, Nico Williams, or even one of those bench options later on. So I know who am I to give advice. I'm ranked 641k. I know someone always says that in the comments. But that is what I'll be thinking about so fair play 87 points on the wild card one quick thing actually 
at the start of the season, a lot of us said, look, we're going to be wildcarding early, and then who cares? We've got unlimited transfers at the World Cup. Maybe we should take some risks. And I definitely haven't done that. I've kind of played the same as I always would. And I'm not saying the thing to learn is to go crazy and hope you get to number one, because sometimes you could play like this and do absolutely terrible, right? The week where two or three of De Bruyne, Kane, Harlan, and Son Blanc, this team's probably not going to do so well because it doesn't have the other players to pick up the slack. Um, but this probably was the season to go a bit different. And some of us, especially me, have not done that. So maybe that's something to think about for the rest, not the rest of the season, but up until game week 16. Could we go a little bit different knowing we got unlimited transfers? This team has definitely done that and right now doing extremely well. So this is the current number two in the world. And this is where we get to players that have used their free hit chip but not used their wild card yet. Now, I did make a big point in videos running up to game week eight saying that I thought the wild card was the better use. And I think just because some people have done really well, we should shouldn't say that our decision was bad or you can make a good decisions over and over but if you have smashed it like this person has and this is Stefan just to give them a shout out 88 points when you compare that to what I got which was 50 38 points is a huge swing it's very unlikely that those of us that save the free hit for later will get a bigger point swing than that now one thing to remember when you use your, uh, your free hit later on it's not just the points you gain in the actual game week you use it it's what you get outside of that so if there's a big blank game week that you can play plan for and there's a bunch of players that you don't really want in the build-up to it but you're happy to have them for that week that can be an advantage because you can focus on other players so don't be annoyed too much if you didn't use your free hit this week and it would have got you a lot of points but if you did use it like this absolutely fair play 88 points is huge have both Kane and Son this is where you need a little bit of luck and when I say you need a bit of luck and this person's had luck it's not to downplay what they've done and there is a lot of skill involved in FPL but you do need a little bit of luck along the way so to get bring in um, Jacob Ramsey who a lot of people talked about pre-season I just wasn't interested in at all and then to get his first goal of the season against Southampton that is the nice little bit of luck you need but then you also make great decisions like having Saka, Son, Kane, Cancelo really nice the one thing I liked here as well is we all talked about in game week eight as if Trippier and Pope were absolutely essential but they've actually gone for the Man City double up in defense with Edison and Cancelo so I really like that I'm glad that paid off because that's the combination that I had as well now I suspect and all I've done is looked at um, with what chips they use for the purposes of the intro to the video I would suspect they've all used it in game week five the triple captain on Haaland right to get those 51 points and again when you um, when you get it on a hat trick right so a player that gets 17 points it's unlikely most of us are going to beat that in a double game week, but at least we give us the, ourselves the chance when there is two games to hopefully either match that or get more. If you can use it in a single game week, like against Forest, Bournemouth, Fulham at home, maybe even Leicester at home right now, then fair enough. That is probably the best chance to get a big score. But as we've seen, even like Haaland against Wolves that had 10 men for a, for a little while, you know, only came away with one goal. So I do prefer using it in a double game week, but it does look nice when, you, when it pays off like that. I think with most of these teams, that have used the free hit they probably now need to use the wild card and that is why i didn't like using the free hit in game week eight because you could have dealt with a lot of those problems with the wild card so this is their team from game week seven this is the one they now have going into game week nine onwards bearing in mind that wild card has to be used i don't see how much longer they're really going to wait to use it kuda Bali, is he going to play every single week tanganga again is just in there because he's cheap mendy and Saar as a goalkeeper combination is quite expensive especially when mendy is not guaranteed to be the the goalkeeper for Chelsea after this uh, week right we don't really know Kepa played the last one but Mendy was injured we don't know who Potter is going to prefer and if we remember back to the Brighton days like when he when he first uh, came in at one point he just dropped Matt Ryan and said something like he needs a bit of a breather and I don't think he played again for the club at all Sanchez just had that number one spot so I don't think it's a guarantee that either Mendy or Kepa is the number one um, Gross and Dunk have just got tricky fixtures now Liverpool Wayne Spurs at home after that they're okay but again you've got to use this wild card at some point you've only got one free transfer now because um, of the free hit being used Diaz and Liverpool are okay Brighton home Arsenal away then Liverpool in game week 11 not ideal but because of the fixtures afterwards you can definitely carry Liverpool players through and we know that Kane, Haaland, Mitrovic and Cancelo are decent so I don't know if this team needs a wild card straight away but it's not going to last much longer again Koulibaly might not even play Dunk's got bad fixtures so you've only really got Cancelo and Van Dijk I would say the free hit got big points 
the wild card could have got close. It could have also set them up for game week nine onwards. And then obviously the free hit could have been used later on. So absolutely smashed it. Being number two is great, but I think the wild card is probably getting played now. So I don't want to repeat myself too much. So we'll skip through things that are kind of basically the same. So again, this is the number three overall. Give them a shout out. Kiki, maybe. I got probably got that wrong. That's probably not how you pronounce it. So I apologize, but shout out to you. 83 points on the free hit this week. Did have the Pope and Trippier double up. Kane in there as captain with Son as well. So a lot of them had Son this week. Absolutely smashed it with the 19 points. What a week to bring him in after the seasons he's had so far. No goals, and all of a sudden he gets the hat trick that you free hit him in. That's amazing. Obviously, Bernardo Silva in there as well. Similar game week history. So I actually used the triple captain in game week four, not five. But I'm going to assume this was on Haaland for his uh, hat trick against Crystal Palace instead and it was right so didn't go for Nottingham Forest went for Crystal Palace at home got the hat trick fair enough had Luis Diaz that same week and Trent Alexander-Arnold so absolutely smashed it in game week four with 114 points and if we look at their game week history they were ranked 4.5 million after game week one then million after game week two and they just absolutely smashed it week after week after week and again the triple ca uh, the, the triple captain's being used but again smashed it so that doesn't matter the free hits also been used so again we look at the game week 17 which team they're coming back to now i wouldn't worry about the flag on Lloris. i think that is very much an international break injury i'd be very surprised if he doesn't come back uh, playing from kind of game week nine onwards the bench again is very very cheap so you got brunt at 3.9 uh, bueno at 4 million for walls i'm not even sure i knew he was a player in fpl uh, and murphy and basically the bench is is worth nothing so you're hoping that these players play every week mares is a bit of a minutes concern rashford is not necessarily going to be fit but there's not a huge amount of other issues in this team so this could be with a couple of transfers, a team that could make it to game week 13 and then look to wildcard. People that are wildcard in this week, most of them are going to get Trent Alexander-Arnold. Some might get Salah instead. But having Kane and Haaland for a couple more weeks is not necessarily a big issue, especially when you can captain Kane in game week 11 against Everton at home when Liverpool and Man City play each other. But it's not to say that Salah and Haaland won't be good options that week, but I think Kane is the best option. And Luis Diaz is obviously doing pretty well compared to Salah for a lot of a cheaper price right now. So if you're happy to captain Haaland most weeks anyway, then not having Salah until maybe game week 12 is probably a decent play, right? I don't think... It, like, I will have him on my wildcard team. I'm almost certain of that. But I think waiting until game week 12 for that, I think it's West Ham at home, then Forest away, Leeds at home run. That's when you really need him. That's when maybe you switch, uh, switch out Harry Kane. So use the free here. Obviously, you've still got to use the wildcard at some point. But I don't think this team has too many issues. You could just take a hit, switch Mahrez and Rashford to two other players, keep Lloris because I think he'll play, and just try and hope that you get away with that bench for a few more weeks. The biggest issue I see with this team, you got Jesus, Martinelli, Maris, Harlan, and Cancelo. That is five players that are going to blank in game week 12. I'm not sure there's enough transfers there to deal with that and then wildcard afterwards. So it's going to be a tricky decision. If you're going to wait until game week 13 to use the wildcard with this team, you need to start selling off those Man City and Arsenal players now. And Rashford probably would have to go as well if he's injured. So it depends how many hits you want to take. I think you could maybe get away with two transfers this week and then in game weeks 10 and 11 start to offload those City and Arsenal players. Is, um, but it, it could be a it could be one of those where the wild card is, is used again. Last point is uh, Mal Malassia um, for Man United. A lot of people have asked me about Man United defence. I don't mind them, but I don't think there's a huge amount of games in the next five that you'd really want to play them. Probably Newcastle at home, maybe Everton away. It's really the fixtures from kind of game weeks uh, 14 to 16 where they're a little bit better. So you could have them as a long-term option, but for the next five game weeks, they're not really for me. So this is the number four overall ranked team. Again, free hit you, Song, Kane, Harden, 94 points. Absolutely incredible. I'm going to go for the whole name here. Matthew Van Riel. Hopefully I've got that right. I feel like I've done nothing but apologize for names in this video. The only real difference to the other teams was, again, it was the, the double up on Newcastle instead of double up on Man City. But also Sal uh, Saliba with 15 points. So he's done really well this season. Two goals, one assist in seven games is incredible. Only 4.5 obviously starting price. He has gone up to four points now uh, nine now i know that i would have probably stuck with gabriel had i free hit so fair play for getting the guy um, with a 15 pointer that is absolutely huge let's take a look at which uh, hat trick he got again yeah it was the game week five one i'm sure this is going to be a uh, harland against not in a forest at home which of course it is M Malassia in there as well again so that's the second team in a row that's got him um, if we look at what the team looks like for game week seven just really quickly by the way they started really well uh, 311,000 in the first week is decent actually got a red 
red arrow in game week two but now you're ranked overall number four you're probably not minding that red arrow too much so this is the team from game week seven so let's see if it needs a wild card uh my initial instinct is not necessarily I think Malassia, again, we've just spoken about, is okay in a couple of fixtures coming up, but not ideal. Sanchez has got two tough fixtures now, and obviously Ward on the bench you could play in a couple of them. So instead of playing Sanchez against, uh, who is it, Liverpool away and Spurs at home, you could play Ward for Forrest at home and Bournemouth away. I know Leicester have been really bad, but if they're going to get clean sheets, these are the, the type of games to do it in. I think, again, Luis Diaz and James is really good. Uh, I think James will definitely be on my wild card. Salah will be as well. So will Trent. So this team is actually really well set up i would say to a certain point for kind of game weeks 9 to 12 if you want a wild card in game week 13 again some of the advantages for 13 is getting triple man city which a lot of people will struggle with obviously having those liverpool players in place as well and getting any arsenal players back that you want because i think they have southampton away and nottingham forest at home so having like martelli and saka or martelli and jesus looks pretty good now you've got those two players already but obviously they blank along with harden in game week 12 and you've got zinchenko so i think one of the one of the issues with these teams is going to be um, the fact that they've got Rashford as well. So you can possibly deal with a couple of those Arsenal players and then wildcard them back in. But it's also having to use transfers on Rashford and Gross hasn't got great fixtures. I suppose you could bring James in instead of Gross, Luis Diaz in instead of Rashford, and maybe just uh, switch Zinchenko. For a couple of weeks, that would be okay. Like on wildcard, I will not have Jesus. Uh, but I don't think you need to panic if you have to play him for the next couple of difficult fixtures for Arsenal. So this is definitely a team that could get through to game week 13 if they wanted to. If you happen to be watching this, any of these players in the top five, let me know when you're looking to use your wild card. I think this team can just about get away with it. You play Ward instead of Sanchez for a few games, then put Sanchez back in, maybe use a few transfers to get rid of your Arsenal players, and then wild card them all back in with your triple man City. So yeah, I think this team is probably the best so far that's set up to not use the wild card in game week nine if they don't want to and then we've got the number five overall so again another free hit 72 points this time so not quite as good as everyone else that we've looked at so far and this is jonathan hill that is finally a name that i can definitely pronounce i think the big difference is was no harry kane in this team i think i saw at least one of the other teams had saka instead of jesus so a few extra points there as well um did have the the man city double up the interesting pick here is really michelenko i'm not sure that is someone i would have thought of i just think on a free hit to target west ham away not necessarily ideal but in this case it pays off so very nice i think with 72 points this is like the other teams as well i still think wildcard was probably the better play but at least you absolutely smashed it with this one you could have definitely wildcarded and got close to this score and then probably made up more points later on so again no uh, at panic at all right you're number five overall you don't need to listen to what an idiot like me says but i think this is the one where i'd be the most disappointed with the score versus what i could have got with possibly using the wild card not everybody smashed it on wild card i get that but a lot of people kind of got 60 plus which is very close to this score again game week five triple captain no doubt on harland absolutely smashed it with 93 points and interestingly they've been number five for three game weeks now so they've got that nice gray arrow so no green no red you just stay in the same place and they've been in the top million since the start and obviously very quickly climbed as most of these players would have let's look at that game week 17 just to see if they need a wild card so again they've got Salah and Trent in there so they're great picks from game week nine, nine onwards in my opinion you've got the triple up on Arsenal I think with Odegaard he's probably going to be fine after the international break so keep an eye on that Rashford might be as well I should say that I know I've been talking about as if you have to get rid of him but if he's fit he's perfectly okay to play for the next few game weeks as well so no major issues here i think edison is okay for a few more weeks you've got war so edison in game week 12 blanks you could play ward against Leeds at home if you wanted to so you could play edison for the next three then play ward and then wild card in game week 13 you've got harlan to deal with but you could bench him if you wanted to in game week 12 if you were happy to lose the money you could sell him to kane in game week 11 then wild card him back in in game week 13 and i think that is something really worth considering if you're one of those people that's looking to get through to game week 13 before wild card in i know you're going to lose a little bit of money on harlan but to get that kane captain in when most people are just going to bench uh harlan in game week 12 and play him against liverpool away in game week 11 and don't get me wrong he could get a really good score that week but it is likely to be a tough fixture that could be a really nice play. You get Kane in for 11, then you wildcard in game week 13 and just get Haaland back. And you don't have too much else to deal with. Trent, 
James and Trippier is a perfectly good defence. I think, and then look again, Jesus, Martinelli, and Odegaard. It's not great having a triple up for these games, and you have to deal with them by game week twelve. But if if um, Rashford is fit or Odegaard is fit, you could just use a transfer on one, of whichever one you want, and just play the other one. So it's not you're not really in that much of a bad position. Again, I don't think you need to go uh, necessarily out of your way to have to use it in game week 13. But this team has the option, and it's probably the best setup to use it then, right? So again, you choose a couple of transfers next couple of weeks to get rid of Rashford and Odegaard. And then look to bring in a couple of other players for a few weeks, maybe a few punts, Sinister or someone like that you could go for, and then look to wildcard in game week 13. So I, I quite like the way this team is set up. I'd just be not disappointed, right? Because you're number five overall and you got 72 points. But I think the wildcard would have been the better playing game week eight. But then I said that before, and these guys have smashed it. So who cares, right? So fair play. That is the five top ranked teams in FBL. Hopefully you enjoyed that video. Something a little bit different. If you did, make sure to give it a like. Hit that subscribe button if you're new around here. And I'll catch you again tomorrow. Mm -hmm.